Hi guys and welcome to another technical tutorial about Esprino running on the ESP8266. This one isn't particularly ESP8266 specific and here we're going to talk about timers. So let's get on with the story. If you're writing a JavaScript application, there's a good chance that you're going to want to perform some activities over and over again. For example, you might want to pull a GPIO input every 10 milliseconds or every second, or you might want to send a, a text message every five minutes, or some other activity that repeats at scheduled intervals. Within the Esprino JavaScript API, we have a function called setInterval. Let me illustrate that in the Esprino documentation. So if we go to the reference and we scroll down, we will find a function called set interval. Yes, I'm looking for it. There we go, set interval. And if we look at the set interval API, we find that this is its function, this is its description. Now the set interval API takes as parameters a function and a timeout. And what that means is that the function defined as the first parameter to set interval will be called every timeout number of milliseconds. So let's see that in practice. I've got some samples over here. Each one are commented out. So let's uncomment the first one. And in this example, we're calling set interval with a function that prints the word tick and it's called every thousand milliseconds. So that means that it runs once a second. So if I run this, down here on the console we see the word tick echoed to the console once every thousand milliseconds. And set interval runs over and over again. So each time a thousand milliseconds passes, uh, we run the function and then the clock is restarted and we go run it again. So that's great. Now let me comment out this next function. It's a partner called set timeout. Now it's almost identical to set interval, except that with set timeout, the function is only run once. So let me run this one now. We've still got the tick function ticking every thousand milliseconds, but after 5,000 milliseconds from when this code was written, the function which echoes run once is run. And then no matter how long we wait, it's not going to be run again. Well, that's pretty cool. So let's go into a little bit more depth. Now, if you know JavaScript, this is going to be uh, a shrug to you, but uh, there's some of us out here who don't yet understand all the nuances and all the subtleties of JavaScript. So let me comment out a big chunk of stuff here. And uh, let me comment back in this example. So in this example, using the function keyword of JavaScript, we're declaring a function, which has got a name of my func, and we're defi defining that as a global function. And that global function is the function that we're passing into set interval. So previously, we supplied the function we wanted to call as what is known as an anonymous, because we didn't know its name, an anonymous inline function. Here, we're defining a global function called myFunc, and we're passing that as the function reference to set interval. So if I run this one, now we shall find that tick every thousand milliseconds, myFunc is called. So that means that we're calling the my function global function. So again, these two statements, the set interval with the inline function and the set interval which is being passed, the name of a function, they're identical. It's just that the function in the first one is declared in line, whereas in the second case, it's defined as a global. Okay, so let's, uh, let's comment that one out again. Let's look at another variant of this story. And in this variant, what we're doing is we're declaring a variable. And that variable is called my var func. That's literally just a variable. But in JavaScript, a variable can also be used to point to a function. So my var func becomes a variable that is a reference to a function that when executed 
basically logs this. So now we can pass, instead of a hard-coded function name, we can pass a variable, and the function pointed to by that variable is now the one that's run. So if we run this, now we see that every second, the function pointed to by the variable, which in this case is an anonymous function, is the function that's called. Gosh, that's cool stuff. Really, really cool stuff. So now let's look at one last thing, which is the concept of an identity of an interval. When we call the set interval API, the we said that starts a timer ticking, and every time the timer reaches zero, the function specified as the first parameter to set interval is called, and then it repeats over and over again. Well, the set interval API returns an identity of that particular timer. So if we run this, and we look at the console here, when we run it, we uh, print my ID, and there it is, my ID happens to be one, and that is the identity of this timer. Now, should we want to stop the timer, we can call the method clear interval and pass in the timer ID. And notice that we're still ticking away here. If I call clear interval now, the ticking stops. So what we can do is we can register an interval function to be executed every number of milliseconds. And that can keep on ticking away for as long as we like. And when we're done with uh, uh, firing off that, uh, that interval, should we decide, we can call clear interval to clear a timer. So again, these are, these are primitive APIs which are fully documented in the Esprino documentation. If we look at the documentation reference here, you can see the URL up here. We've got APIs called uh, clear interval, set clear timeout, and set interval and set timeout, which allow us to set and get to set one-time timeouts, repeating intervals, and to clear one-time timeouts before they fire, and to clear repeating intervals so that they won't fire again or won't fire the first time. Again, this was just a, an illustration of some of the basic features of writing in JavaScript on an ESP8266. I hope you found uh, this mini tutorial useful to you, and uh, thanks for watching, and look forward to making more of these in the future. Thanks now. Bye-bye.